cheerleader, Kylie Atkinson. Daughter of Mandy Atkinson. She's being escorted by Anita Atkinson and BJ Atkinson. Senior cheerleader is Olivia Lund. She's the daughter of James and Emily Lund. Senior player number five, Caden Hamden. Caden is the son of Steve and Mary Jo Hamden. Senior player is number 41, Samuel Chase. He's the son of Steve Chase and Dana Chase, and he's being escorted by Joe Chase and Charity Dodd. Sherry Norris, and he is being escorted by Heidi Mock and Scott Norris. Our next senior is number 42, Dylan Thompson. Our last 
Class senior is number 53, Brandon White. Brandon is the son of Ronnie and Sherry White and Demetra Bug. He's being escorted by Ronnie and Sherry White. football field. I'm Stan Stevens. Time for Salem Tiger football. And this is going to be an SCA conference game, the very first of the year between the Houston Tigers and the Salem Tigers. Glad to have you aboard. And we hope you're ready for some good football action tonight. Houston comes in with a 2-0 record. Salem Tigers 1-1 after losing last week to St. Clair. Last week, Houston beat St. James, the same team that Salem beat in week number one. They're going to be featuring a lot of running attack here tonight. And we uh, we know of and they're going to feature three good running backs. Uh, that's something that we really haven't seen from Houston in the past where they have that kind of depth in the running position. But we will tonight. Salem Tigers. In the meantime, we're coming off a little bit of a loss. They had a couple of turnovers that kind of turned what would have been a, a much closer game into what sounded more like a rout. But uh, nonetheless, 45 14, they lost to St. Clair. St. Clair senior Layton team. And boy, they've been playing together a long time, and it sure did show last week. So tonight, the Tigers and the Tigers will battle out in the cat fight. Salem in their navy blue uniforms. They have the Carolina blue stripes on the shoulders. They have the white numbers. And for Houston, they'll have their black pants and white jerseys with the black and red numbers. Don't forget, real value is more than a fair price. It's quality service, experience, and convenience, and that's what you get at Napa Auto Parts every time you stop by 604 East Sinegers Boulevard. Get in touch with Eddie at 729-4156 for all your parts, locally owned since 1946. And Fairground Auto Plaza in Rolla gives you a fast, convenient way to find a car. It's called Shop, Click, and Drive. You can check things out online at fairgroundgm.com. Fairground Auto Plaza at the corner of Fairgrounds Road and Kings Highway, right next to Bryant Drive. That, that uh, nice little island, all those fairgrounds right there. You can check it out. Fairground Auto Plaza. And Progressive Ozark Bank is a community-focused financial organization that serves not only Salem, but Licking, Houston, Hartfield, and Mountain Grove. A full line of financial services is available at Progressive Ozark Bank. So the coin flip is being held right now. Earl Jarvis out for the Salem Tigers. Number 23, Anthony Carroll out for Houston. Houston has the call, and let's see what happens here. They won the toss, and they will receive. So... So we're getting things ready to go. As the time winds down, so Houston will receive the kick and they will defend the goal to our south. And uh, we will uh, have football for you on this Friday night. Now we know that St. Clair, who we played last week, is not playing tonight due to the COVID. They had a couple kids come down uh, with COVID. They do not have enough to play. So their game has been postponed for tonight. So. This is unfortunately going around, and it's a reality in today's sports world. Also, the JV game between Houston and Salem for Monday has been postponed. So that game not going to be held on Monday. It has been actually, I think, just canceled. I don't even know if they're going to be able to reschedule that. So, again, the Salem JV football game with Houston scheduled for Monday has been postponed. So... 
And uh, we'll keep you informed if that does get rescheduled. But as of right now, that is not, not on the agenda. So it's going to be Tigers kicking off, and it comes down into the hands of number 23, Ty Franklin. Franklin right up the middle of the field. has got a big hole. Gets hit and taken down to the 35-yard line. First and 10. Franklin is their quarterback. He'll be flanked. He will be flanked there by running backs Bailey Hurst, also Zach Fuel, and their fullback Chris Shishan. Now normally they line up with three back and three in the backfield, but now they're going to do something a little different in a double wing formation. Franklin will give that ball off in a big hole up the middle for number eight. That's Bailey Hurst, and he'll pick up about eight, maybe nine yards. May brings him down, second down, one yard to go. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Houston Tigers. Now they go in their three-back formation. They'll get this one off to the second man through, number 24, and that's Zach Fuel. And Fuel will get the first down, down to the Salem Tiger, 45. That's a gain of eight yards for Fuel on a first down. Number nine, Eli Newman. So Houston will have that variety of flavor with backs here. Not quite as, as deep as they were last week with St. Clair, but definitely going to be a variety as they kick out. Man to the left, man to the right. Split backfield right now. They're going to give it off to Hurst again. Hurst has a bit of a hole, and he'll pick up about four yards. Tackled from behind. Easton May with that tackle. Second down and six. Houston, waiting for the play to come in from the bench. Coming wide to the left side, we're in number 39. That's Renee Lathram. Franklin, man in motion, takes it, gives it to Hurst. Hurst hitting the backfield. He's not going to get much, going to lose too, actually. That'll take him down right there. He gets nothing. And Gover got in there quickly in a loss of two. Third down and right around eight yards to go. 9.35 and counting here in this first quarter. No score, just underway. Again, coming wide to this left side is Renee Lathram. And again, they go out of their three-man formation in the back. Willing to throw as Franklin fires it out. It is caught, and they do a little flea flicker, flipping it back to Hurst, and they'll pick up the first down. Well, we've seen that tried last week as McNew, McNew got the pass, and they just flipped it off to Hurst, and he gets the first down. So first down for Houston, that is their second. Now they do a little inside handoff for a reverse to Shishan. Shishan up the middle, still on his feet, gets across the 25-yard line of the 24, and it will be second down in about a yard. They'll actually spot him down close to the 23. So they're doing all kinds of different things in here. And actually, that was Anthony Carroll with that, not Shishan. He was in the fullback position, but he carried that ball nine yards for the Houston Tigers. 8.47 to go, and they're moving the ball down the field. Franklin, that quarterback, handoff easily. Just a simple hello handoff, number 24. And that's Zach Fuel, and Fuel will dive 
for about four yards. Second down. And still six yards to go. We are here. With A13. I know. Rolling is Franklin, flips it out, and the ball is incomplete. Third down and seven yards to go. Eight oh three to go on the clock. Franklin as Salem moves ahead of time. Flag goes down. It'll be offside against the Salem Tigers. Five yard penalty. Eight oh two to go. Third down and one after the penalty of the Salem Tigers. Franklin hands that ball off, and Hurst turns the corner. He gets the first down inside the 10 to about the 8. That'll be a gain of just about 6 yards. And another first down for Houston, their fourth. Apologize for some of those on the radio side that we had cut off there. 740 and counting. No score here as Houston is driving on their first possession. Ball is inside the 10 at the eight yard line. And the clock continues to run. They have mostly kept the ball on the ground. But they have incorporated the pass. Franklin wants to take it to the left side. Cuts back up the middle. Franklin to the four yard line. A flag comes in from the back judge. Franklin picks up about four, but a flag came in, usually in the area of holding. Let's see if that is the call. And it is holding against Houston. So that will take the ball back. And the flag should be from the spot of the foul, but they did not do that. They marked it from the four yard line. So it's a four yard gain for Franklin and then a 10 yard penalty for Houston. So it moves the ball back to the 14. The foul is actually closer to about the eight, but they did not mark it there. McNew wide to the right side. Again, they're going with a two man wide receiver slot. Carroll the single setback. Franklin wants to throw, fires the ball out, and it is caught at around the 10 yard line. Taking it down for the Houston Tigers was number seven, Robin Toon. And that'll be a gain of four. Second and goal from the nine. Here's Houston trying to get turn that corner and going down for a loss. Good play by the Salem Tigers is Franklin as he tried to extend the field. Kaufman got back there and took him down. And that'll be a loss of about three. And a flag is down. And again, holding against Houston. Will Tigers take the play or will they take the penalty? It looks like the Tigers may take the penalty. They are. So the loss is negated to go back to the original line of scrimmage. 
put the ball down at the 19 yard line. Go back into their triple formation. Flipping it back outside, trying to find some running room and getting inside the 15 yard line. Ball comes out late, but they're gonna mark him down, number 24, and that is Zach Fuel. He'll pick up about nine. Bring up third down and goal from the 12. Third down and goal from the 12. They stay in that three-man formation. Wanting to throw is Franklin. Rolls to his left, fires the ball deep in the end zone. Caught and dropped, caught and dropped in the end zone, nice. Throw, but the ball came out of the hands of Robin Toon as he hit the ground. And it'll bring up fourth and goal from the 12. Boy, Franklin put that ball where only Toon could get it as he was sliding down, but he couldn't hang on. And it brings up fourth down. Fourth down goal. Down to nine seconds left on the play clock. Franklin has it, sets up, throws a little screen out and not expecting the screen. And then a flag is gonna go down for a late hit. That's gonna be very unfortunate. The player did not know the screen was coming and a late hit by the Tigers after the play Official on the sideline, that was not much of a hit. But it's gonna give Houston a first and goal if that is the penalty. Personal foul against the Salem Tigers. That was just an inadvertent hit as the man going out for the pass just never turned around. That was Bailey Hurst. And then Hurst got hit by the Tiger player. It's a it's a penalty of just six yards, but it's an automatic first down and goal for Houston. What a mistake. They will start out first and 10. Our first and goal, it should be. They've got fourth down on the marker, but it's first and goal. Franklin will turn and give it up the middle, trying to find his way in as fuel, and fuel gets stopped at around the three. Four thirty-seven. Actually going to spot him down closer to the four. So a gain of two for fuel. And now it looks like they're going to take a water break. With 4.37 to go in the first quarter, still. Really, they say a fumble recovered by the Salem Tigers on the play. I didn't see that. And so the Tigers will take over the ball, but it's still a water break. Well, that's a break for the Salem Tigers as Houston fumbles it and the Tigers recover and they will have the ball at their own four yard line. We'll come back in 30 seconds with more Tiger football. You're listening to it here on KSMO Radio.
Don't forget Town & Country Insurance Associates can handle all of your commercial, personal life, and health insurance. For a quote, call them 729-6624 with offices in Salem, Licking, Rama, and Mountain Grove. Well, a break for the Salem Tigers, a fumble. I had the binoculars on her. I did not see a ball come out, but they awarded the ball to Salem Tigers at the four-yard line. And the Tigers come out and give it off to Camden, and he is crushed in the end zone for a safety. Or did they They are marking him outside? They're going to mark him just outside the goal line. That's a break for the Salem Tigers. It'll be a loss of four, but, I mean, that ball is just outside the goal line. Anthony Carroll got in there in a hurry, and it'll be a loss of four on Caden Camden's first carry. But I mean to tell you, he got in there and he put him down in a heartbeat. Now the Tigers are just inches away. So kind of going back in that old wishbone formation. Connell gives that ball up the middle to Atchison and he'll dive forward for about six, maybe seven, out to near the seven yard line. So a good run by Atchison to get a little bit of breathing room in there. 340 and counting. I'm going to call it a seven-yard gain. It'll bring up third still. About six and a half to go for the Salem Tigers. Deep in their own zone. Garrett Connell, quarterback. Again, the Tigers going kind of with a wishbone formation. He wants to throw it. Now turns back inside. He's going to go down. No room. He tried to go to the outside. He was cut off by number seven, Robin Toon. Try to reverse his field, and he'll go down for a loss of a yard and a half. And now it's fourth down, and this is going to give Houston some very good field position. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter, no score, but the Houston Tigers have held on to the ball most of this first quarter. Connell will go back to punt. He's in his own end zone, and Salem has had some issues with snaps. Let's hope that's not the case here. No score, 240 and counting. And a timeout called by the Salem Tigers. We'll take a 30 second break and come back. No score in this one. This is Tiger Football on KSMO Media. the best this year as go Tigers from the city of Salem and if you would like to find out more information about the city of Salem Park and Recreation Department uh, their programs contact Melissa Dubois Park and Recreation Director at 79-6290 and Larson Collision Center has been serving Salem for over 30 years they do free estimates and their work is guaranteed call Gary 729-3915 or stop by 500 North MacArthur so Franklin will drop deep, and deep only means the Salem Tiger 40-yard line. Garrett Connell is back in his own zone. It's fourth down, still about eight yards to go. Tigers did get a break when they did not call Caden Camden down in the end zone. As they said, they got pushed back in after his forward motion was stopped. The snap's the key. It's a good snap. There's pressure. The kick is fairly short. It's going to come down around the 25 and takes a Salem Tiger bounce to the 33, and that's where it'll come down. First and 10 for Houston, a very good field position as Dominic Barrett downed it. So it will be Houston ball at the Salem Tiger 33 yard line. Excellent field position for these Tigers. And they had no trouble moving that ball in that first possession. So Shishan back in there. 
See what Franklin wants to do here. Gives it to see Sean up the middle. He's a big kid. Lost the football, taken down to Salem Tigers. And coming back the other way for Salem. Moving down the right side is Connell. Connell trying to break the tackle. He does, a Franklin, and he's gonna go in for the touchdown. Garrett Connell on a fumble by Seashawn. He picked it up out of the air and ran back 71 yards for the touchdown. What a break for the Salem Tigers. So Garrett Connell takes the second fumble tonight by Houston and runs it back. 71, maybe 72 yards. I'm gonna give him 72 because he was inside the 30. And the ball came bouncing up in the air. Connell picked it off and came back the other way. And the Salem Tigers take the lead with 2.14 to go here in this, the first quarter. Kaufman will hold. Now, he's not the normal holder for Gover. They need a, they need a stand. Plus, they have a kicking tee out there and looking for it, and Gover doesn't have it. Now, they need a football. They don't have the football either. So, Kaufman will do the holding. Gover will do the kicking. And they get him a nice little tee. There you go. Waiting on the extra point. Snap is back, it's high. Kaufman will try and take it and run with it. He's gonna go down. It's a high inside snap. Never had a chance. And so the Tigers, extra point fails. So the point after fails. Six nothing, Salem Tigers. Here in this game, return yardage of 72 yards by Garrett Connell in the right place at the right time as Seashawn with his first true carry of the night up the middle and lost the football. And there was Connell to take it back the other way, 72 yards. Hey, it's never too early to start your tax planning and tax consultation. Let tax masters help you start preparing for the upcoming tax year with over 40 years experience. Call Tax Masters at 729-3001 or drop by 510 North Main Street. 6 nothing Salem with 2.14 to go in the first quarter. So Salem will kick off. Going deep. Be Franklin down the middle. He'll be flanked by number 22, Anthony Carroll, on the left, and Hurst is on the right. I should say Fuel's on the right, excuse me. So Franklin is the deep man. And the kick will come toward Franklin right at the 12-yard line. Franklin's got some speed up the middle. He's got a hole, turns it into the middle, and still going up to the 44-yard line. Good run back by Franklin, taken down by Newman. First hit by number nine, Eli Newman. Don't forget tonight. But that was a good run back all the way from the 12 up to, they're going to mark him at the 45. So a good 33 yard return and good field position for Houston. So Houston will come out a little tighter formation. As Franklin will go under center. There are three backs. Carroll back in instead of Seashawn. The handoff on the outside over to Hurst. And Hurst will meander his way for four yards. Second down, six yards to go on the far hash mark. Cloudy sky night. Looks like a few baby sprinkles out there. Don't think it's affecting the play as of right now. Franklin will flip it back, ball loose. That actually goes into the hands of, of a player. He goes to the outside to the 40, to the 30, and gets taken down the 28 yard line. Enough for a first down. By accident, Robin Toon had that ball come right to him. 
and bounced off the chest and all the way from the 49 yard line down to the Salem Tiger 28. So a good 23 yard run for Toon. And again, I'm pretty sure that wasn't really the way it was drawn up. He might have been getting the ball anyway, but not bouncing off the chest of the running back. But it worked out for Houston and they get another first down. Flipping it back to Fuel. Fuel off the right side, trying to weave his way to the inside, but not much room there as the Tigers take him down after a gain of four. So Fuel with a good run. Makes it second and six. Houston trying to. I've already seen a little hook and ladder by Houston. See what else they might try. 20 seconds left to go first quarter. Salem moves a little bit and, and then flags come down. Didn't look like they actually got over the line, but they did. And that's Salem Tigers third penalty. That one, not as critical as the other two, or the other one, I should say. That, but that ended up not hurting Salem as Houston fumbled the ball. So Houston now faced with a third and one at the Tiger 19. Six seconds, five. I may not get this play off before the quarter ends, down to one. And they won't. One quarter in the books. The Salem Tigers lead it after the first 12 minutes by a score of six to nothing on a Garrett Connell fumble recovery. And uh, we'll come back in a minute with the second quarter action. This is Tiger football. You're listening to it on KSMO Radio. Watching it on KSMORadio.com. The best this year as go Tigers from the city of Salem. And if you would like to find out more information about the city of Salem Park and Recreation Department, uh, their programs, contact Melissa Dubois, Park and Recreation Director at 7962.90. And Larson Collision Center has been serving Salem for over 30 years. They do free estimates and their work is guaranteed. Call Gary, 729-3915 or stop by 500 North MacArthur. So Franklin will drop deep, and deep only means the Salem Tiger 40-yard line. Garrett Connell is back in his own zone. It's fourth down, still about eight yards to go. Tigers did get a break when they did not call Caden Camden down in the end zone. As they said, they got pushed back in after his forward motion was stopped. The snap's the key. It's a good snap. There's pressure. The kick is fairly short. It's going to come down around the 25 and takes a Salem Tiger bounce to the 33, and that's where it'll come down. First and 10 for Houston, a very good field position as Dominic Barrett downed it. So it will be Houston ball at the Salem Tiger 33 yard line. Excellent field position for these Tigers. And they had no trouble moving that ball in that first possession. So Shishan back in there. Let's see what Franklin wants to do here. Gives it to Shishan up the middle. He's a big kid. Lost the football. Taken down to Salem Tigers. And coming back the other way for Salem. Moving down the right side is Connell. Connell trying to break the tackle. He does. A Franklin. And he's going to go in for the touchdown. Garrett Connell on a fumble by Seashawn. He picked it up out of the air and ran back 71 yards for the touchdown. What a break for the Salem Tigers. So Garrett Connell takes the second fumble tonight by Houston and runs it back 
71, maybe 72 yards. I'm gonna give him 72 because he was inside the 30. And the ball came bouncing up in the air. Connell picked it off and came back the other way. And the Salem Tigers take the lead with 2.14 to go here in this, the first quarter. Kaufman will hold. Now, he's not the normal holder for Gover. They need a, they need a stand. Supposed to have a kicking tee out there and looking for it, and Gover doesn't have it. Now they need a football. They don't have the football either. So Kaufman will do the holding. Gover will do the kicking. And they get him a nice little tee. There you go. Waiting on the extra point. Snap is back, it's high. Kaufman will try and take it and run with it. He's gonna go down. It's a high inside snap. Never had a chance. And so the Tigers extra point fails. So the point after fails. Six nothing, Salem Tigers. Here in this game, return yardage of 72 yards by Garrett Connell in the right place at the right time. As Seashawn with his first true carry of the night up the middle and lost the football. And there was Connell to take it back the other way, 72 yards. Hey, it's never too early to start your tax planning and tax consultation. Let tax masters help you start preparing for the upcoming tax year with over 40 years experience. Call Tax Masters at 729-3001 or drop by 510 North Main Street. 6 nothing Salem with 2.14 to go in the first quarter. So Salem will kick off. Going deep. Be Franklin down the middle. He'll be flanked by number 22, Anthony Carroll, on the left, and Hurst is on the right. I should say Fuel's on the right, excuse me. So Franklin is the deep man. And the kick will come toward Franklin right at the 12-yard line. Franklin's got some speed up the middle. He's got a hole, turns it into the middle, and still going up to the 44-yard line. Good run back by Franklin, taken down by Newman. First hit by number nine, Eli Newman. But that was a good run back all the way from the 12 up to, they're gonna mark him at the 45. So a good 33 yard return and good field position for Houston. So Houston will come out a little tighter formation. As Franklin will go under center. There are three backs. Carroll back in instead of Seashawn. The handoff on the outside over to Hurst. And Hurst will meander his way for four yards. Second down, six yards to go on the far hash mark. Cloudy sky night. Looks like a few baby sprinkles out there. Don't think it's affecting the play as of right now. Franklin will flip it back, ball loose. That actually goes into the hands of, of a player. He goes to the outside to the 40, to the 30, and gets taken down the 28 yard line. Enough for a first down. By accident, Robin Toon had that ball come right to him and bounced off the chest. And all the way from the 49-yard line down to the Salem Tiger, 28. So a good 23-yard run for Toon. And again, I'm pretty sure that wasn't really the way it was drawn up. He might have been getting the ball anyway, but not bouncing off the chest of the running back. But it worked out for Houston, and they get another first down. 
Flipping it back to Fuel. Fuel off the right side, trying to weave his way to the inside, but not much room there as the Tigers take him down after a gain of four. So Fuel with a good run. Makes it second and six. Houston trying to. Already seen a little hook and ladder by Houston. See what else they might try. 20 seconds left to go first quarter. Salem moves a little bit and, and then flags come down. Didn't look like they actually got over the line, but they did. And that's Salem Tigers' third penalty. That one, not as critical as the other two, or the other one, I should say. That, but that ended up not hurting Salem as Houston fumbled the ball. So Houston now faced with a third and one at the Tiger 19. Six seconds, five. I mean, may not get this play off before the quarter ends, down to one, and they won't. One quarter in the books. The Salem Tigers lead it after the first 12 minutes by a score of six to nothing on a Garrett Connell fumble recovery. And uh, we'll come back in a minute with the second quarter action. This is Tiger football. You're listening to it on KSMO Radio, watching it on ksmoradio.com. Duncan Family Chiropractic at 401 West City Rose Boulevard can handle all your chiropractic needs and ask her about Juice Plus. Duncan Family Chiropractic, 729-2321, 729-2321. Second and one for the 19. We're just starting the second quarter. Houston now will defend the goal to the north as they switch sides. Franklin will get that ball up the middle and diving through down to about the 11 yard line wearing number eight is Hurst. Another first down for Houston and Hurst had that easy. Gain of about eight. So Houston divvying up their handoffs here. Hurst has been kind of the favorite, but Carroll in, Seashawn in now, and Hurst. They give it to Hurst to the outside, cuts back against the grain. Hurst still on his feet. Hurst is in for the touchdown. Hurst from 11 yards out goes in after going to the outside and cutting against the grain. And he goes in from 11 yards out at the 11-21 mark of quarter number two, and it's tied at six. They'll go for the point after. Coming in to attempt that point after, worrying number 72 will be Trevor Mitchell. Tune holds, Mitchell's kick is up. He boots it right through there, it's good. So Mitchell with the point after makes it a 7-6. Houston lead. The Tigers had a 6-0 lead after the first quarter, but Houston, who was on a drive, finished that drive with an 11-yard run by Bailey Hurst. Nice run, as I mentioned, he was moving to the outside, cut back against the grain, and took it in the end zone. And we have a ball game, 7-6 Houston. Don't forget Southwest Baptist University Salem campus provides you with a quality higher education close to home. It's for the residents of Den County and surrounding areas. If you have any questions about in, uh, going to 
SBU, contact admissions counselor Chris Welch, 729-7071, 729-7071. And don't forget Calvin Malone at American Family Insurance can help you with all your insurance needs. Call him at 729-5165, 729-5165. So Mitchell will kick off. Salem Tigers have not gotten on the field yet. There they go. Connell will be the deep man. Now remember, Mock is not playing tonight with a sore knee. So Dawson got beat up in that collision with Kaufman. So Kaufman will be the wide man on the right. Caden Camden on the left. And we'll see what Mitchell wants to do for Houston. They lead it now by a point. His kick. Somewhat deep, goes toward the sideline and will bounce out of bounds. And so the flag goes down. Salem can take it at the 35 if they wish or make them re-kick. That is their option. You know, Hubs Tire Center, 801 South Main Street in Salem can handle all of your tire needs. You know, if you are looking for tires, they got Michelin, BF Goodrich, Goodyear, and Cooper. Hubs Tire Center since 1986, 729-5800. And for financial strategies and one-on-one -on -one advice, contact Joe Brand, your Edward Jones Financial Advisor at 507-907 South Pershing. That's where his office is. Call to set up an appointment, 729-3831. Joe Brand, AAMS Financial Advisor. Tigers in the I formation. Atchison, the up man, and Caden Camden, the deep man. They give it to Camden. Off the right side, big hole. Camden hurdles a man and gets up to the 48-yard line. They'll spot him down there. Actually, they're going to give him to the 49 and give him a 14-yard gain and a first down for the Salem Tigers on really their first decent play in field position. So Camden with the burst up the middle, first first down for Salem, and here we are with 11 minutes to go in this first half. Tigers go back with two receivers to the left side. Atchison is the fullback. Camden, the deep man. I'll flip it back to Camden again. This time he's going to get taken down as a blitz came in and flags go down. Looked like there might have been a face mask there from my angle, but I'm not sure about what the officials see. But it looked like Camden's got his face mask pulled back, and so let's see if that is the call. We'll uh, see what the official has to say. I think you're going to say holding on Salem. Didn't really see the hold, but I did see the, the grab of the face. And it was behind the line of scrimmage, so it makes it even a bigger penalty. The loss of four. And then penalty. So that penalty for Salem actually is almost a 14-yard penalty. This is from where the ball is, or the penalty is incurred in high school football, not from the line of scrimmage. Connell back to throw, looking for Kaufman deep, fires it deep. He's out there, that's Newman, and it's incomplete. Newman trying to get away from Franklin, was double teamed out there. Connell had it out that way, and just Newman just kind of ran out of real estate. Thought that might be Frank uh, Kaufman out that way. Instead, it was Newman. And it'll bring up. Should bring up third down. They have fourth down. Actually, should bring up second down, excuse me. No, well, it should bring up third down, actually. But we're not going to argue. Now the officials are trying to figure it out, I think. And Coach Lane Howard, in his attempt to try and settle down his team, calls a timeout with 10.34 to go. Salem trailing it by one, seven to six. Let's take a 30-second break and come back. This is Tiger Football on KSMO Media.
You know, when it comes to heating or cooling your home, don't forget about Victor Heating and Cooling LLC. They can take care of you. They're your Lennox dealer, plus their water furnace dealer. See them at 301 East 4th Street or call 729-4332. Victor Heating and Furnace. And cooling. Might need a little cooling today. A little bit sticky out here. In the pistol. Stab is back. Pressure on the quarterback. Connell, he gets knocked down, but the pass to Camden is a little bit short. Tried to short arm it out there and couldn't make it. Bring up third down and still about 22 to go. The so Tigers' penalties have really hurt them this year. They've had way too many. And they come at some very critical times. Kaufman comes wide to the left side. He'll be flanked there by Luke Campbell. Newman wide to the right side. Remember, no Dawson Mock. Connell back to throw, gets pressure, fires it deep down for Kaufman, and the ball is going to be intercepted. Going to be intercepted by number two, Brady McNew. So Houston will take the ball over the 30-yard line. I didn't know if maybe Kaufman pulled that away, but no, McNew held on to it. And the first turnover by the Salem Tigers puts Houston Back at the 30, and that's actually the deepest possession that they've had yet in the game. So they will take over first and 10. And we'll see what the Tiger defense can do here. 10-19 to go in the half. Appreciate you joining us here on KSMO Radio and on KSMORadio.com, Twitch TV, SCA Football. Franklin will turn, flip it to Hurst. Hurst trying to turn the corner again, cuts back to the middle, still on his feet, and will get about three. Out to about the 33-yard line. So Hurst with a three-yard carry. Nine fifty-three and counting in the half. Salem Tigers trailing it by a point. Seven six Houston. Carroll in the middle. See Sean to the left. I give it to Hurst again. Hurst, big hole up the middle, and he gets across the 40 to the 43 yard line. He just weaved his way through there and found himself in open ground and got a 10 yard burst for a first down for Houston. He's got 59 yards on the night. And Houston with another first down there, seventh of this first half. This first half been dominated pretty much by the Houston Tigers, yet it's a one point game. A Couple of turnovers for them have hurt them a bit. Robin Toon will come wide to the right side. Actually act as a tight end here. As Franklin get this one off to Fuel, and Fuel will gain two. Fuel tried to go back the other way as he came in for Hurst. Be second down and eight. So Hurst is a junior. Fuel is a junior. And Seashawn a senior, and Carroll who's been running back there is a sophomore, big kid. So the Houston future looks pretty good in their backfield. These guys are running hard. Second down eight. Line up in that three across. As Franklin, you got the inside handoff to Tune. Tune with a big hole, Tune. It gets across the 50 into Salem Tiger territory to about the 48. Be a gain of six, maybe seven, as they'll spot him down just inside the 48. 
and it'll bring up third and one. So a little inside handoff, a little reversing there to tune. Tune with 30 yards, got a 23 yard carry on a previous run. Well, third down and one. Tigers are in the offensive zone. The Tiger put his helmet across the, goal, the line. It was Easton May. And that's going to be a five yard penalty. He came across into the neutral zone. And that cost the Tigers five, even though he should be able to move back. It's a first down for Houston. That was a silly five yards because Houston had just one yard to go. Make them earn it. Instead, the Tigers just gave them a free first down, their eighth of this first half. So from the 43-yard line, Franklin flip it back out to Hurst again. Hurst likes to try and cut back into the middle. Didn't have much room there as a number of Tigers got a hold of them. Not much room. So only a one yard gain by Hurst. Now with 11 carries for 60 yards and a touchdown. 6.45 and counting here in this, the first half. 7 6 Houston with the lead. Mixed extra point, the difference. Tigers only score a 72 yard fumble return by Garrett Connell. Houston down to five seconds on their play clock. They're going to have to hustle to get it off, and they're not going to be able to make it, and their coach will burn a timeout. He saw what I saw, and Coach Eric Sloan said, time for a timeout with 6.23 to go in the half. 7-6 Houston, let's take a 30-second break and come back. This is Tiger football on KSMO Media. Welcome back to the Salem High School football field. Stan Stevens here after the timeout. Second down nine for Houston. In the pistol with Hurst. Franklin wants to run it himself up the middle, has a bit of a hole, got hit he, pretty quickly, but still was able to gain about five yards. Couldn't hang on to him was Easton May. And I think there's a flag down in the middle of the field. Right around the 38 yard line of Salem. And that's going to be holding against Houston after a three-yard gain by Franklin. They'll take him back 10 yards. As their third, third holding penalty. So second down, we'll call it 15. Back to throw is Franklin looking over the middle, getting some pressure, gets away. No, he does not. He is taken down by the Salem Tigers for a loss of about seven. Getting in there for Salem was Brandon White. Got away from Easton Bay, couldn't get away from White. A loss of, well, I'm gonna call it six. And 
Third down at 22 right now. And so the Tiger defense trying to stop him here and get the ball back. Five and a half to go in this first half. Tune comes wide to the right side. Three receivers in the pattern. They get out quickly to Tune. They're going to do a little hook and ladder. Tigers bid on it again. It's going to be a first down for Hurst. Salem bid on it again. Second time in the game. They've done exactly the same thing. And Salem was not ready for it. So the, the pass to Tune for a gain of only about eight, and then Hurst picked up the rest. And that was a gain of almost 20 yards down to the Tiger 29. After the handoff from Hurst. Going to be 6-17, actually. So first down for Houston. You got to learn from the mistakes of the past. Salem didn't do it there. Got stuck on that hook and ladder again. Handoff up the middle, not much room. Trying to find his way for a yard or two as Fuel didn't have much room at all. Tigers really stuffed that middle up, gain of two. 4.25 to go. Decker Pro Exteriors. Can do a lot of different things to keep your home clean. They can power wash your house. They can power wash your business. They can clean off your roof. They can clean off decks, concrete, even playground equipment. Get in touch with Decker Pro Exteriors. Call Jake at 247-3395, 247-3395. Down to eight seconds left on the play clock. Again, they'll have to hustle. As Franklin goes in the gun. Handing that ball off and trying to find a little bit of running room, and he actually found a little bit more than that was Hurst. And Hurst picks up about six. So Hurst with not even much room able to pick up six yards. Down to 3.30 to go in the half. Houston with a 7-6 lead. And driving again after the interception of a Garrett Connell pass. They're keeping the ball on the ground for the most part, except a little hook and ladder play here moments ago. And again, Salem moves. Didn't go offside, tried to draw him off, didn't go. And the ball loose on the ground as the ball is being handed off decision. I think he got it. But it'll be a loss back of a yard. Ball came loose on the handoff decision. And Houston, with 2.57, calls a timeout. With the score, the Houston Tigers 7, Salem Tigers 6. We'll come back in 30 seconds. This is Tiger Football on KSMO Media. And don't forget Salem Farm Equipment at 1807 South Main Street is your local Vermeer dealer. If you've got hay equipment that you need to work hard for you, they can make it sure it does the job. Make sure it's ready. Call Salem Farm Equipment. Call them today. 729-3458, a proud supporter of your Salem Tigers. So fourth down and about five and a half, actually, as Franklin goes in the gun. He goes back to throw, looking, fires it out quickly, and the ball is tipped away and away from the intended receiver tune by Newman. And so the Tigers will hold. Newman did a good job of just coming in there and pushing the ball away from Toon. He did not interfere with him, and so the pass play is incomplete. We have an official 
And now the officials will give the teams a chance to get a little water break. It's kind of late in the half to do that with 2.53. Let's go ahead and take a 30-second break and come back. It's Houston 7, Salem 6, back at 30. This is Tiger Football on KSMO Media. Hey, don't forget Common Grounds Bistro, 300 B South Main Street serves a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Common Grounds Bistro. For takeout orders, call 729-2912, a proud supporter of your Salem Tigers. 2.53 to go in the half. Tigers on the offense for only the third time in this first half. Connell in the gun, goes back to throw. Fires the ball down the field, and it's incomplete as out there was Gover. He was hit from behind late, but no flag thrown. Ball was in, virtually in and out of his hands. He got hit there by Hurst right after the ball went through his hands. The ball was right there. Bradley just maybe heard the footsteps because he was the only one out there among four Houston Tiger defenders. Second down and 10. No time off the clock there. And so 247 still remains. Newman. And Campbell, wide to left side, Kaufman to the right. Again in the gun, single setback is Camden. Back to throw is Connell. He turns to the right side. He may run that ball. He's got a lot of room. Down first down and more. Garrett gets across the 38 to the 40, and he'll go down there after a gain of 16 yards and a first down for the Salem Tigers. He rolled to the right, and there's nobody out there. And Garrett, instead of throwing the ball, just... Tucked it and ran. His second carry, but it gives the Salem Tigers just their second first down of this first half. They trail it by one point with 2.24 to go. Campbell Newman wide to the left side. Again, in the gun is Connell Camden, single setback. Looking to throw, now running it again. Nope, fakes it, throws it, and caught by Campbell. Diving catch right at the 50-yard line. He started to come back to help his quarterback, and Connell sidearmed it, and Campbell with a heck of a catch, and it's very close to a first down, but not quite there, a nine-yard play. Bring up second and one. First completed pass by Connell. 152 and counting. Connell gets a block from Caden Camden. Fires it deep down the field. Intended for Kaufman. He's out there. He's got it. And dropped it. Had it. Dropped it at the six yard line. Kaufman got down, got behind his defender. Had the ball when he hit the ground. It bounded away. Now one for five is Garrett Connell. Here in this first half. That was a well thrown. He's thrown a couple good balls. The one to Gover. That one to Kaufman right there on the money. Couldn't ring him in. Third down in about a foot and a half. Connell still wants to throw. Fires the ball downfield. Nice catch by the Salem Tigers. Getting out there was Campbell again going up, bringing it down at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 13 and a first down. Another first down for the Tigers and their third. But a minute and a half to go. Clock is running. Trips to the left. As Connell. Gets a block, fires it out quickly, and the ball's intercepted by Houston. 
All the way down goes Toon, cuts back against the grain, and it'll be taken down at about the 25-yard line as Connell got him there. Connell tried to force that one in. Toon read it and cut it off and gets the interception. Well. So with a minute 12, Houston at the Salem Tiger 29-yard line after the interception return. Houston will start on Salem's 24-yard line, first down. Two turnovers for Salem, two turnovers for Houston. 7-6 our score. Three receivers trips to the left for Franklin. He wants to throw, looking downfield, fires it down for Toon, and it's out of bounds. Newman out there for the Salem Tigers. VIP Properties offers two locations to help you find your next home, Salem and in Houston. If you're moving to Missouri from Missouri or around Missouri, contact Pat Tackett at 729-7622 at VIP Properties. And Conway Construction LLC can build you a brand new home. They can add room onto your home. They can build a new deck for you to put siding on, tile, wood floors. They can do it. And they can even do custom skid steer work or dump trucking. Call Randy at 247-6468, 247-6468. Bang in their three across formation. Franklin with a long count trying to draw it offside, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Nope, it's going to be a timeout by the Houston Tigers with 106 to play here in the first half. 7-6 Houston. We'll come back in 30 seconds. This is Tiger football on KSMO Media. Don't forget Salem Memorial District Hospital is a critical access hospital right here in Salem with an emergency department and are associated with a family medical clinic. And don't forget that their entire health fair is going on the entire month of September. So the health fair profile, your thyroid test, PSA test, yes, you can still get all those discounted tests right now at the Salem Memorial District Hospital Monday through Friday from 7 to 11, but you have to make an appointment, 729-6626. 106 to go. Houston gets it, gives it off to Hurst. Hurst gets hit at the line of scrimmage and goes down. Not much room there. Brandon White was there for the Salem Tigers. He was not the first man to hit him. I think it was, I think it was Easton May that got in there first. So bring up a third down and about 11, a loss on that play of one. Franklin back to throw, gets the pressure, gets hit, trying to throw the ball, does fire it out there and it's caught. And I tuned at about the seven yard line. He was in the grasp of the Tiger players but they couldn't bring him down. And he flipped that ball out for a gain of 18, 19 yards and a first and goal from the six. Clock is running. Franklin has it, trying to run it in himself, gets hit, taken down at about the three yard line. He's not gonna get in and they have no more timeouts, I don't believe. One, zero, can't get it off. So the Houston Tigers burning an extra timeout there late in that second quarter, came back to haunt them after the completion down the tune of 18 yards. And good job by the Tiger defense again to keep Houston out of the end zone, but couldn't bring down Franklin and was able to complete that pass and tell you, he has had a good night, three for five. It looks like right now for 33 yards. So he has, bit, he has done a good job. And of course, a lot of their hook and ladder plays have really worked out well for Houston in this game. Two of them have gone for first downs each time and for some pretty long yardage. We are at halftime here at KSMO. They will be doing a halftime band parents salute for the seniors. 
uh, because of the COVID-19. They're trying to get all those celebrations in as quickly as they can because you just never know if we'll be playing two weeks from now or three weeks from now or even a, a month from now. So the band will have uh, their celebration here at halftime. And so uh, we'll be uh, trying to fill a little bit of that time for you. We have this SCA contest. We'll tell you next week we'll be down at Thayer to take on the Bobcats. And that'll be always a tough place to go. You know, Salem Tigers and the Thayer Bobcats have played some knockdown drag out games in the past. And it's always tough to win at Thayer. So the Tigers have to be on top of their game. This has been a good game back and forth. A couple of too many fumbles for Houston, a couple of too many interceptions for the Salem Tigers. But you have to tip our cap to the Houston Tigers. They came into this game ready to play and they have uh, done a very good job controlling the ground game and controlling the clock, keeping that ball away from the Salem Tigers. And it has uh, worked, however, not on the scoreboard as the Tiger defense has been able to step up create the fumble when needed or make the interception or it's just right there before halftime, be able to stop the man trying to go in the end zone with no time left on the clock. Can't score when you run out of time. Let me tell you, over K&H All Supply, your parts of the auto parts store at 700 South Main Street in Salem, they're offering curbside service. All you got to do is call 729-6667. They offer battery recycling and testing. They can do custom hydraulic hoses. They can do to your engine code check so much more. K&H Auto Supply. And Town & Country Bank, a locally owned community bank, is dedicated to providing personal and business financial solutions. They believe that offering smart, friendly solutions will build lasting relationships, and that is what community banking is about. Serving Salem with two locations, 109, I'm sorry, 1009 East Scenic Rivers Boulevard and 400 West Scenic Rivers Boulevard. And we are at halftime, Salem Marching Blue performing for the crowd. A nice crowd on hand. Not as busy and crowded as it was last week, our last home game against St. James, but a nice crowd nonetheless. We're going to take a two-minute break and come back and give you some stats from the first half when we return. This is Tiger Football. You are listening to it on KSMO Radio and watching it on KSMORadio.com. One. We're going to take a two-minute break and come back with some um, individual stats on the first half when we return. This is Tiger Football. You are listening to it on KSMO Radio. Watch again on Fidelity. I'm sorry, on KSMORadio.com. Bruce and Rachel Pettis and Amanda Holt. 
After graduation, Jamie plans to go to college to become a registered nurse. Next, we have tenor saxophone player, Briar Ray. Briar is being escorted by Carolyn and Bill Gresham. After high school, Briar plans to attend either a trade school or Missouri State University. We are at halftime, and the seniors are being saluted here from the band, as they did earlier today from the cheerleaders and the football team. And they're doing this in anticipation that COVID could create problems later on. And so they're trying to get a lot of these things done here while the season is still going. And so uh, we kind of tip our cap to the school, trying to think a little bit ahead and, and just try and take care of this while they can. And, uh, again, we, we tip our cap to them because it's just an incredibly tough time to try and figure out what to do. And they're doing the best that they can to try and get through it. Well, Houston and Salem have tangled up here very well. Uh, talk to a little bit about uh, some individual stats here as Brady Hurst has led the way at 14 carries, 82 yards for Houston. Stack Fuel has eight carries for 30. Ty Franklin, three carries for a total of just one yard. And then you have uh, uh, coming your way, the Anthony Carroll who carried the ball two times uh, for eight yards. And then Toon, their actually receiver, has carried the ball twice for a total of 30 yards. And those are on those hook and ladders. Then you, uh, you also have the quarterback, Ty Franklin. He has had a, a decent night. He's three for five for 33 yards. Actually, three for six for 33 yards. And his favorite receiver has been uh, Corbin Toon with uh, three catches for 30 yards. He has been the guy that, to, that he has gone to. Then for the Salem Tigers, just not a lot of offense because they haven't been on the field all that much. Garrett Connell with a couple of runs. Uh, he's got uh, two runs, 14 yards. Caden Camden, two runs for 10 yards. And you got Devin Atchison, one for seven. Connell is three, two for six passing for a total of 22 yards. So just not a lot of offense out there for the Salem Tigers. Salem has three first downs uh, in the game. They have been penalized five times for 35 yards. And for Houston, they have had nine first downs in this game, and they've been penalized three times for 30 yards, all on holding calls. So that's where we stand right now here at halftime as the band is now making their way off the field. I do want to tell you that next week, Salem Tigers will be at Thayer to take on the Bobcats in SCA play. And we'll have that game on KSMO Radio, as well as on a stream at ksmoradio.com. It's our plan, at least, to be able to do that for you from Thayer, Missouri. And also, do want to tell you that our Lady Softball Tigers will be at home to face the Waynesville Lady Tigers on Monday. It'll be our first softball broadcast on Monday from the Salem City Park Field there by the Armory. If you can't make it out to the game, We'll have it for you on KSMO Radio. Again, it's our intention to stream that as well. And that will be Monday against Waynesville. I do want to tell you that the JV football game that was scheduled for Monday against the Houston JV, that has been canceled due to a COVID problem with Houston. They had a player come down with COVID, and then they quarantined most of the rest of the players, so they will not have enough players to participate in that JV game. So that game has been canceled at this time. And also the game next week for the Lady Volleyball Tigers with Potosi has been postponed due to a COVID situation there. And that will be rescheduled at a later date. Don't have that rescheduling date in there. Now remember our Lady Tigers softball team has had a number of reschedules uh, since they were to start out way back in early September and late August. And those games will all be made up. They have been rescheduled. I don't have that rescheduled right now with me uh, with the St. James game and the Alton game. I just don't have that here in East Carter and the Ava game. I think the Ava game is going to be on the 21st of September. That one I kind of remember. That's going to be here pretty quick. And then the other games will all be in October. So there will be a lot, a lot of softball games right there before district play 
for our Salem Lady Tigers. So COVID is, is having its way and, and affecting a lot of different things going on, especially in the sports world. So, again, the high schools are doing the best that they can. But, again, we do want to remind you, JV game Monday, that has been canceled with Houston. That game will not be held. And, of course, then next week with the uh, volleyball game with Potosi, that game also has been postponed, not canceled, but postponed, and that will be made up at a later date. So here we are at halftime with 4.58 to go in this uh, long extended halftime, which I don't think they really needed to do that. It's a beautiful night. Nice crowd on hand. Not a, a super full crowd like we had the first game when St. James was in town, but a nice crowd nonetheless. And I want to thank all the Salem Tiger fans for coming out and supporting the Tigers. We do, uh, do want to remind you, though, that we are putting these games and we are streaming them on Twitch TV. We did have the chat room open. We're going to be shutting it down because people are trying. I don't know, guys, if you're watching, you should be enjoying the games and not be critical. Shouldn't be using language you shouldn't use. So from now on, our games will not have the chat open. Uh, it's unfortunate. We want people to comment, hear what they had to say. But if you can't say anything that's at least positive or even kind enough to, to put out there, we will be eliminating that. And so... It's unfortunate uh, that we have to do that, but people, you, you know, these are high school kids. They're doing the best that they can, and it's a tough situation. Remember, these kids did not have any preseason you know, warm-up games. They had no jamboree. They had nothing. They started playing without having physical contact with another team until their very first game. So it's, it has been a, just an, a very odd year for everybody and that kind of you know goes for every sport too it's not just going to be football it's going to be that way probably with basketball and, and you know, even baseball next spring but who knows what next spring is going to bring we hopefully will everybody will be able to can still participate we can still have our sports and still be able to move forward so here we are at halftime 7-6 houston let's go over the scoring for you here before we take a real short break and come back the only scoring in the game for the Salem Tigers was a Garrett Connell fumble recovery. He picked the ball up. Actually, the ball was popped in the air. He didn't pick it up at all. And it came down right in his arms, and he cruised 72 yards from the 28-yard line of Salem all the way down the right sideline and cut back to the middle. And he went in for the touchdown. The point after the snap was high, and that failed. Made it 6 to nothing. Salem Tigers. Houston came back on their next possession, and they... Tied the game at 6-6 on a Hurst 11-yard run. But then Mitchell came in, and his point after was good. And that's the difference in a ball game right now, 7-6. And that's where we stand as we are here at halftime. As Salem comes back on the field, so Houston's getting ready to do the same. We are at right now 7-6. Houston Tigers on top here at halftime at Salem. We'll take... A one minute break and come back. This is Tiger Football. You are listening to it on KSMO Media, 1340 AM and KSMORadio.com. Well, both teams are back on the field and uh, doing a little bit of calisthenics and trying to get themselves loosened up. That extended halftime. Got a chance to maybe relax, get a little bit of rehydration in there and get things going. Garrett Connell for the Salem Tigers will be, I'm sure, ready to throw the ball. Tigers did have some success in throwing the ball. A couple of passes that uh, he hooked up with, with the one with Bradley Gover was right there. Bradley was surrounded by Houston Tigers. Ball went through his hands. And then he got hit right away. And then another one by Kaufman where he had the ball, hit the ground, and lost it. So a couple of uh, nice passes right there by Connell that were not completed. The Tigers will need those kind of passes in the second half. But also, Houston had the same thing as 
a nice pass to Tune in the back of the end zone. He had it, dropped it on their very first possession, and they ended up fumbling the ball away, and the Tigers got it back, and Houston did not score on that possession. One thing the Tigers will have to watch out for is getting the offside penalties and giving Houston easy first downs. Those, uh, there was four of those penalties of five yards in the first half, and those five-yard penalties, they don't seem like a lot of yards, but a lot of them came with third and one or third and three, and they automatically gave Houston that first down without them having to earn it. And we, you know, that's not something the Tigers want to be uh, guilty of here in giving some easy first downs. So the Tigers are going to have to be at the top of their game. Houston's been playing a very good game, very physical game, and uh, they look to try and and the Salem Tiger winning streak of all these years. It's been a long time. I can't remember how many years, but it's, I think it's over 30 that the Houston Tigers have lost every year to Salem Tigers in SCA play. They know they want to break that streak. The Tigers like to keep it going here on, this, on the blue side. So we'll see what happens here. We're about we're moments away from that kickoff for the second half. On the radio side, don't forget Cardinal baseball coming up after this. It'll be the... Cardinals taking on the Reds. So we hope you'll stick around for that. Don't forget Cardinals and Reds tomorrow, 620, pregame show. And then Sunday at 1220, those games right here on KSMO. We do want to remind everybody next week, the uh, softball game we talked about it on Monday at 430. That will be on KSRadio.com only as the Cardinals have three double headers next week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So Monday's game will be on ksradio.com only. It'll be streamed there and broadcast there. And then uh, again on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next Friday, we will be recording the second game of the Cardinals doubleheader and playing it back after the Salem Tiger football game. So we'll try and do that. I think that game starts a little bit earlier. The other games are all starting at like a 410. So there's no way for us to be done with it. I think the one on Friday starts at 210 and should be done by 630. So we can have Tiger football for you and then bring you that second Cardinal game on a delayed basis. All right, Connell goes deep. Caden Camden to the left. It'll be Campbell off to the right. Or is it going to be Kaufman this time? It looks, still looks like Campbell. Mitchell ready to kick it off. See what Salem can do here in their very first offensive possession of the second half. Kick is a deep one, comes to Connell at the five. He takes it, looking up the middle, taking his time, trying to find a hole, and he doesn't have much room. He'll dive out to the 27-yard line. Taken down there hard by number 13, Chris Sishon. Second half play. Salem Tigers, Houston Tigers, SCA play, Salem at Thayer next Friday night. As we'll be playing the SCA the rest of the way. Kaufman wide to the right, Campbell wide to the left. Campbell with a couple of outstanding catches in that first half. In the eye formation, they give it to Camden. Camden with a big hole off the right side, breaks a tackle, and they clog it up quickly and try and bring him back, but he'll get up near the 35-yard line, a gain of seven yards for Caden Camden. Camden now with 17 yards on the ninth. Just underway here in the second half. Atchison, the up man. Camden, the deep man on second and three. Ball at the 35-yard line. Houston up by a point. Flip out to Camden. Camden cuts to the middle through the side and he gets taken down nicely on a good tackle by number 22, Anthony Carroll, but not until he gets five yards and a first down. Well, they're going to spot him down a little less than where he ended up. But it's still enough for a first down. I thought he got close to the 40. They marked him down near the 38. So maybe his knee went down a little earlier than I saw. But it's still a first down for the Salem Tigers. And that is their first of this second half. Big hole up the middle again. Camden turns the outside. Got running room to the 50. And he is hauled down by Carroll out of bounds at the 46. Big hole. 
And that's 15, 16 yard carry for Camden. And another Salem Tiger first down. They're finally getting that running game going. With 10.49 to go. Caden got to the outside and Carol Hogg tied him outside right in front of the Salem Tiger bench. Tigers in that eye. Flip it back out to Camden again, the right side. He tries to turn that corner. He's got running room. He's still on his feet. And he'll run out of bounds at about a 31. That'll be a 14 yard gain and a first down if that's where they mark him. And they do. And suddenly Caden Camden has 60 yards on the night. Been a one man show here. Starting out this second half. Tigers down by a one point seven to six. Can we stay in the eye as Connell will go under center? Maybe this was talked about at halftime. See what they can do. Camden up the middle again, a big hole, and he gets across the 25 yard line to the 23, maybe the 24. The officials will spot him down to 23. That's a gain of about eight yards. Second down and two. So Caden. Got a little life in those legs yet. Coffin to the left, Newman to the right. This has been just a running effort right now. Camden bounces off one would be tackler and gets very close to a first down near the 20 yard line. Taken down there by Toon and Mitchell. Official will spot it up and look. Looks like to be a first down, and it is. Gain of three for Camden. Tigers already have more first downs in this drive than they had in the entire. First half. Atchison with a handoff up the middle to the 15. Just a burst right up the middle in a game of about five for Devin. Salem, number 24, Devin Atchison. On the tackle for Houston, number 72, Trevor Mitchell. The Tigers moving the ball on the ground with some definitive precision. Connell under center, gives it to Caden Kaufman. To the outside, has running room. Kaufman turns the corner, touchdown! Caden Kaufman from 16 yards out. The Salem Tigers have taken the lead. And with that drive, Caden Kaufman goes over 100 yards. Sorry, Camden, I think I said Coffin. Excuse me. But what a run, he got to the outside. Camden did and he just turned it on and there was nobody out there. Salem going for two here. Again, they give it to Caden and he rolls in. He was on top of the, if he was on top of the Houston player I think the Tigers are trying to tell him that. The Tiger player from Houston grabbed him and threw him down in the end zone. Threw him down, but he was on top of the Houston player before he went in the end zone, but they're not going to count it. So it's a 12 7 Salem lead as the two point conversion fails. That's one of those deals where you're not down even though you're tackled. As your knee didn't go down, you didn't hit the ground, you hit the player, and he rolled over the player and then. Caden rolled into the end zone, but they're not going to give him the count. So Camden almost at 100 yards now. He's got 96 on the night. And Caden Camden's touchdown from 16 yards out. And now Tiger defense, that only took three minutes and 10 seconds. Kickoff for Salem number eight, Colin Hayden. Back deep for Houston 23, Ty Franklin. 
for the Tigers. 22-23 We'll kick off. Colin Haven will do the kicking. Kicks this one to the right side. It's going to hit the ground and picked up there. Well, Franklin does pick it up finally at the 10. And then it goes down at about the 16-yard line. He went to pick it up, didn't get it. And then finally, Tigers converged on him after he did go back and get the ball. So Luke Campbell in there with that tackle. That's a good kick by Haven, a kick it away from Franklin. So he had to go get it, track it down, and bring it back. They're used to with the ball at their own 17-yard line. As Franklin goes under center, trailing again 12 to 7. Handoff up the middle, big hole as Hurst finds a gap and gets about six. So Hurst bursts through for six yards. He's got 88 on the night. Second, we'll call it a long three, a short four. Carroll in the middle. Hurst and Fuel. They flip it back to Fuel. Fuel to the outside, and he's got what appears to be a first down. Very close at about the 27. Very close. This piece depends on really where they mark it. And they're going to go ahead and give him the first down. Close enough. So Fuel with a gain of four. Twelve seven Salem on top. What a nice drive by the Tigers to start out the second half. Just didn't take a lot of time off the clock. Franklin turns, flips it back out to Hurst, trying to turn that corner, and he's taken down in the backfield. What a great play by the Tigers to get in there. Bradley Gover dove in and took him down for about a five-yard loss, maybe a little further. They're going to spot him back at about the 22. So that should be about a six-yard loss and make it second and 16. So a nice play by Bradley Gover to get there. and take Hurst down before he can turn that corner. Fuel checks out. As a new package comes in for Houston. They'll put McNew out wide to the right side. Rolling that way is Franklin, fires it out and the ball is almost intercepted by Newman. Newman was all alone, and the ball went right through his hands as the receiver, McNew, cut down in, down and in, and I believe Franklin thought he was going down and out, and the only one out there was Newman, but the ball went right through his hands, incomplete. Six thirty-one to go in the third quarter, and it'll be third down and 16. And new players in for Houston. Make new checks out. Houston stays in their three man across with Carroll the middle. Keeping it himself as Franklin, a big hole up the middle, but not big enough. He'll get about nine. So he faked it to fuel. It'll still bring up fourth down and at least seven. Franklin gets nine. I think they're going to have to punt here on fourth and seven. Kaufman going somewhat deep, but not very deep as 
Franklin drops back and needs her punter. Gets it. It's off the side of his foot. It comes down by the Tiger bench. It's going to die right at the Salem Tiger 49 yard line. And that's where Salem will have it. That punt only netted 21 yards. And Salem has very good field position after coming off a fantastic rushing drive only in which they marched down the field deftly and scored. See what they can do on this drive. 5.49 to go third quarter, 12-7 Salem. Kaufman wide to the right side. Newman wide to the left. They stay in that I formation. It was very successful that last drive. See if Houston's made any adjustments. Connell giving it to Atchison and there's no room. He gets no gain. And Atchison comes up limping. Got a bit of, I think, a cramp in his left calf. He may have to check out. And Adjison will come out. Ball still at the 49-yard line. Easton May came in for him. As Camden's the deep man, he gets the handoff up the middle. Camden trying to work his way across the 50 and gets pushed by his team down to the 46-yard line. That's a gain to five, and it'll bring up third and five from the Houston 46-yard line. Nothing like a little assistance from your teammates. Ball the 46 of Houston. It's third down and still five yards to go. Salem 12, Houston 7, SCA play. Glad to have you along on the KSMO Medium. Kaufman wide to the right side. Newman wide to the left. Gover splits out. Campbell out there as well. Back to throw. Connell fires it down to Newman. Newman has it at the 35-yard line. It gets down to the 28. Taken down out there by McNew, but that's a nice gain from the 46 to the 28 of 18 yards and a first down for the Salem Tigers. Connell put that where only Newman could catch it. And a first down for the Salem Tigers. That's number eight. Look at that number nine, excuse me. They're back in the I formation. Hand off up the middle and trying to get a little bit of yardage there as Atchison as he's back in the game. He came back in after the last break, it's three yards. Second down, seven. They give it to Camden, a lot of room to the right side. He turns the corner, gets a block, then he goes down towards the 10 yard line. What a play by Caden Camden, and what a block out there by Kaufman. All the way from the 26 yard line down, we're gonna say at the, well, inside the 10. They're gonna mark him at about the seven. 19 yards and a first down. And man, what a nice block out there by Kaufman to open up that hole and allow Caden Camden to go to the outside. Ball of the seven, first and goal for Salem. 2.45 to go, third quarter. Connell to Camden, no room there. He's taken down immediately as Houston had the blitz on. No gain. Actually a loss of a yard. So Camden 119 yards now in the game. They were ready for that one. Second and goal now from about the eight. Actually a spot it closer to the nine. So we'll just call it the nine. Atchison the up man, Camden the deep man. 
Connell rolls to the left, got some running room, wants to throw the ball, does, and it is not caught. What a good effort, though, made out there by the Tigers. Atchison, he tried to pull that down, couldn't do it. It's incomplete at the goal line. So third and goal from the nine. Atchison almost pulled that in with one hand. So third and goal for the nine. This is two down territory for Salem. Connell to Camden. Camden to the outside, trying to turn a corner, cuts back in, he's in for the touchdown. Flag on the play. Wait a minute, flag is down, but he went in for the score, but a flag is down. And it's going to be holding against Salem. Well, the flag went down at the four-yard line as Camden turned the corner. And he was in by then. But the Tigers, unfortunately, the penalty will move the ball back. That's a 10-yard penalty. So third and goal will be now from about the 14. Connell, flipping it out to Camden up the middle. Caden, back to the right side, trying to turn that corner, and he is in for the touchdown. Caden Camden went right at the gut and then turned to the right side. He goes in from 14 yards out, and the Tigers have an 18 to seven lead. Camden, 14 yard run. Just a little pitch back, actually. You don't normally see a pitch back go back up the middle, but this one did. And Caden took it up the gut, saw that it was crowded, cut to the right, and was able to get inside the pylon for the touchdown. He now has 138 yards on a night. Campbell wide to the right, Coffin wide to the left. Tigers going for two here. Camden checks out, made the deep man. Connell trying to get to the outside, trying to break that tackle, trying to get across. And is he in for two? Looks like he made it. But there's a flag down. There's a flag down. Flag is down in the middle of the field, not near where the action was. And again, it looks like holding called against the Salem Tigers. Looked like Connell with a real nice move. He just outraced everybody from Houston to that corner. But unfortunately, it's not going to count. And a holding call will move the ball back to the 11-yard line. So holding by the Salem Tigers, another holding call. So now it's a little bit farther. They stay in the eye. Back to throw, Connell fires it, and it's caught, and it's good for two. Bradley Gover caught the ball, came down with it, and a two-point conversion for the Tigers makes it a 20 to seven lead. Did they say he was short? Well, excuse me, one official had the hands up. The other official didn't, and I'm thinking, no, it is good, okay. Well, I kept waiting for the score to change. Go over the two-point conversion pass from Connell. And the Tigers have come alive here in the second half and lead it 20 to seven. And then an unsportsmanlike penalty. 
called, I believe, on Houston after the touchdown or after the two-point conversion. So 129 to go in the third quarter, Salem with a 20 to seven lead. I'm sorry, they, they called on Sportsmanlike against Salem. Well, that'll move the ball 15 yards back and that will give Houston very good field position. So Haven will be kicking off and Houston will get the ball somewhere at least near the 40, if not closer to the Tiger goal line. With still a lot of time left to go in this one. 129 to go in the third quarter. Haven's kick toward Franklin. He takes it at the 29 yard line. Franklin up the middle, gets hit and taken down at the 48. Nice tackle made by Easton May. They just grabbed him and brought him down. So Franklin will bring it back to the 47 yard line. May likes to hit, well, that's for sure, but boy, that was a good tackle right there. So the Tigers of Salem with a 20 to seven lead after trailing seven to six and not really showing a lot of offensive life in the first half have come alive here in the second half. Getting back to basics on the ground game. Now can the defense shut down Houston again? Franklin will keep it himself and Franklin will get hit and taken down for no gain. Maybe a yard. Number of players in on that one. White was in there along with number 20, Luke Campbell. They're going to give him a yard. With now 50 seconds to go. Houston controlled the pace of this game in the first half. Man, they just about did anything they wanted to, it looked like. The Tigers have come on the second half a different team. Keeping it is Franklin, rolling it out, flipping it out there and getting that is Carroll. Carroll still on his feet, gets to the 40 yard line. Flags are down in the backfield. That's a gain of 11 and a first down, but we'll see what the flags are all about. I mentioned too many penalties in this game for Houston or Salem already. 80 yards. I make that 70 yards, excuse me, but that's still too many. Well, we're still waiting. Flags are down at the 31, 32 yard line. Legal use of hands is declined. And helmet to helmet contact, helmet to helmet against, contact Houston. against Houston. That was called to the 31. So one penalty has been declined. That's the illegal use of hands. And then a helmet to helmet hit was accepted by the Tigers. Now the ball was down at the 30 seven yard line, but they're marking a penalty from the 32. So comes a 11 yard gain, a 15 yard penalty. So we'll move the Houston Tigers back to the 46 yard line of Salem, where it'll be still second down, I guess three or four. They got the first down and then the penalties were actually down past the ball, but should be marked off from where the ball was marked down, not the spot of the Powell. 
These officials are not right. Can't add the foul further down than the ball. Ball should be moved virtually back to the 49 yard line from what I can see, but they're not gonna do it. And there's some discussion on both sides. High school football has some different rules though. But I've never seen one where the penalty was beyond where the ball ended up and then being moved back from that spot, giving them only, still giving them a big gain. Houston coach discussing the situation, Eric Sloan with the officials. What it ends up being is second down is still about four for Houston after all that. And 31 seconds to go. We're in the first half. From the near hash mark. Franklin under center. Flip it back. Ball fumbled a little bit by fuel, but he'll take it down and get about a yard. Taken down there by Garrett Connell. And Atchison brought down the man as well. So fuel to gain a one. Third down, still about three or so. Fuel checks out. Seashawn in the game. And the buzzer goes. And we played three quarters here at Salem High School football field. With two second or two third quarter touchdowns. The Salem Tigers have come back to take a 20 to seven lead over the Houston Tigers. We're gonna come back in 30 seconds. This is Tiger football. You're listening to it here on KSMO radio and on ksmoradio.com. Well, we want to remind you that don't forget the JV game from Monday at Houston has been canceled. The JV game that was to be played Monday at Houston due to COVID-19 has been canceled. Haven Motors at 205 West Sinegers Boulevard in Salem has been providing services for four generations, and their mission is to offer you clean, reliable cars and trucks at very affordable prices. You can give them a call, 729-8100. Try trading with Haven, Haven Motors. We're in the fourth quarter, Salem Tigers and the Houston Tigers. Salem with a 20 to seven lead at the moment. Houston with a third and three from the Salem Tigers 45 yard line. Franklin, gives that ball off to Hurst and Hurst who's had a good night gets only a yard. Brandon White in on that tackle. And it'll bring up fourth down, it's still two. That'll bring up fourth down. And two. Fourth down and two, of course they're gonna go for it here first minute of the fourth quarter. Franklin, big tall boy. Flips it outside to Hurst. Hurst gets away from one tackler, but does not make it. As he is pulled down by Atchison, he got away from Easton May, but the Tigers pull him down, and the Salem Tiger defense does the job again as Hurst went to the short side of the field, didn't have any room, and he was taken down. I believe Atchison was the one who finally brought him down. I know May got in there first to make him deviate from his path, but only a yard gain is not enough. And so the Salem Tiger offense will come on the field. 11-21 still to go. A lot of time left in this game. The Tigers went on a long, long, or sh I should say a long drive in the first three and a half minutes. Score took them only 3-10. Atchison gets hit right away after the handoff. That'll be a loss of a yard. On the tackle for Houston, number 72, Trevor Mitchell. 
no room there. It looked like that was, a, I won't say a broken play, it just wasn't a very smooth play. So no gain for Atchison. Luke Campbell will bring the play in for the Salem Tigers. It's a clock run. They would like to keep the ball on the ground here and use some time. Campbell goes wide to the left side. Atchison, the up man. Deep man is Camden, who's got a couple of touchdowns in this game. The pitch goes out to Caden. Caden gets tripped up and will lose a yard or two. And there's a flag back there as well. Pitchell comes up lifting for Houston. And I'm sure that's gonna be a penalty on the Salem Tigers. More than likely a hold. I believe Atchison took down Mitchell. And that is behind the line of scrimmage. So that's gonna effectively be a 15 yard penalty. And they're gonna wipe it off. The Houston Tigers decided they're not gonna take it. So it's gonna bring up third down at 14 and save some clock. Don't give Salem an extra play. So still a very long way to go, but one less down to do it in. Third and 13. What do the Tigers do here? Ball at their own 41. In the pistol goes Connell. Snap is back. Connell wants to throw fairly deep down the field. Gets it to Newman. Newman is going to get near 50. He's thrown down a gain of eight. They'll bring up fourth down and still about four. Fourth and four. Will the Tigers go for it here of Salem or will they punt? Connell is somewhat deep. Nine and a half to go yet as Franklin will drop deep to return. Connell standing back at his own 40. Play clock down to nine. The snap is back and he gets off a pretty good punt. It's going to sizzle down around the 30 yard line and bounce into the 20, 19, 18 yard line. And that's where it comes to a stop as the Tigers down the ball there for Salem. So Franklin and company come back out with 9.08 to go in this, the fourth quarter. Salem with a couple of touchdowns by Caden Camden here in this second half have taken a 20 to 7 lead. Camden now with over 100 yards in the game, sitting at, my numbers are correct, at about 100. And 38. He has done so. Only had two carries, really, but going into the second half. But he got the yeoman's share of work in this second half. Franklin will turn and give it up the middle to Carroll. Big hole. Carroll still on his feet to the 30-yard line. Will get the first down. Nice the Connell couldn't bring him down. That'll be a gain of 13, almost 14 yards. And a first down for Carroll. So Carroll, who hasn't carried the ball much since the first quarter. Anthony now has his best run. And another Houston first down. Franklin again gives it to Carroll, trying to get to the outside. And he runs again over Salem Tiger players. Gets to the 43-yard line. That's a gain of 13. Another first down. Another first down for the Houston Tigers as they move the ball quickly down the field on two consecutive runs by Carroll. Carroll, big kid. He's a sophomore, but he's six feet tall. He's a big boy. Next handoff this time goes to Fuel, and Fuel is hit for a gain of only one. Taken down there, coming off the left side by Gover. He read that well. 24, Zach Fuel on the carry. On the stop for Salem, number 32, Bradley Gover. So Gover with that stop. 
Clock continues to run, 7.50 and counting, fourth quarter. Hurst, Fuel, and Carroll in the backfield for Houston. Franklin turns, gives that ball off to Hurst, and he'll dive forward for about three. A couple of Tigers there on top of him. Number 42, Dylan Thompson really got him. So Hurst with a three-yard gain. Third down, we're still going to call it about five yards to go. Ball not quite at the 50-yard line. Franklin and the Houston Tigers. Get that ball to Carroll. Carroll up the middle, gets hit and pushed back. He'll get a yard, maybe two. He'll get to the 50. Not much more than that. Maybe just across to the 49. It'll bring a fourth down and still about three. number 24, Devin Ashton. Uh, three or four Tigers got in there on that tackle. 6.40 and counting. Can the Tiger defense shut them down here? They stopped Houston on a fourth down, and they stopped Hurst here earlier in this second half. Play clock down to 14. I wouldn't be surprised. It might be a little trickery here, and the Houston Tigers, I think, are going to burn... A timeout with 6.19 to go in this fourth quarter with the Salem Tigers leading at 20 to 7. I want to tell you about the Bank of Salem. They're locally owned, a community bank, and they've been around since 1883. That full service bank has been serving Salem and Dan County, offering a wide range of financial services for not only individuals like you and I, but families and businesses. They've been serving Salem in two locations for many years, now 100 West 4th Street and 1001 South Main. The Bank of Salem, their name does say it all, member FDIC. The Tigers will be on the road next week at Thayer, taking the Bobcats. We'll be there to bring it to you on KSMO and on KSMRadio.com on Twitch TV. We hope that you will join us for that game. Whether you're listening in or tuning in and watching it, streaming it with us, we do appreciate you. And we appreciate all our sponsors who make it possible for us to do this and bring you these Tiger games. 619 left to go in this, the fourth quarter. Student section standing, fourth down play. Two by two for Houston. We haven't seen this yet tonight. As Franklin goes back, he's in the pistol along with Carroll. He goes back, fires it out, intended for, I should say, for uh, Roby, and he's got it for the first down. Toon, excuse me. Corbin Toon gets the first down, a gain to the 43 yard line, a gain of six. So first down for Houston. Franklin flips it back to Fuel. Fuel trying to cut against the grain. Big hole gets into the backfield and taken down after a gain of about seven, maybe eight. On the tackle for Salem, number 15, Aaron Connell. Five and a half to go. Houston without a huddle, getting back up to the line of scrimmage. On second down and two. Snap is back, quick handoff, and a first down for Houston as it goes to Hurst, and Hurst will pick up about four yards. Flag is down. <clears throat> Ball at the... Flag went down to 31 yard line. They're talking about it with 518 remaining on the clock. Still have not seen anything from the official. Personal foul against Houston. I'm too Personal emphatic with that call. 
So that will cost Houston 15 yards and at a time of the game, they can't really afford that. Especially after getting another first down, that's gonna negate that first down. Well, I, I say that, I don't know what these officials It's a personal foul. It's 15 yards and they only mark 10. I don't get that one. Now they change it from personal foul to holding. He showed personal foul now. Houston coach is complaining, which Salem coach should be complaining. It should be another five yards back. If it's a personal foul. That's what the official called was a personal foul. But they only moved the ball 10 yards back. And they did it from the spot where the ball was and not the flag. These guys have been very inconsistent tonight. With 5.18 to go, Houston did not get the first down on the play, obviously. The flag went against them. We're not just quite sure what the heck is going on, though, with the call. And now, again, the coach, in, uh, coach Eric Sloan of Houston is really questioning this. And as far as I'm concerned, with it, he's gotten off lucky. with a personal foul call, if that's what the call was, that the ball didn't go deeper. So a 10 yard penalty. Second down and about six. Keeping it is Franklin, rolling to his right, flips it out and it is complete and a flag goes in late on a push out of bounds. These guys are incredible. Pass was complete to Carroll. Carroll got four yards. And then the pop foul on gonna be on Salem. So personal foul against the Salem Tigers, and that was, again, totally uncalled for. Second time in the game, the Tigers have hit somebody for no reason. They're already out of bounds, or the pass, the play was incomplete. A little flea flicker now, going back to Franklin. Franklin trying to run down the sideline, and Franklin will get thrown out of bounds. Another flag will come in. As Franklin ran out of bounds, Salem hit him again, and again, another foul. Another flag with 5.02 to go. And they're gonna hit Salem with another personal foul. Even though they didn't mark it off right against Houston, they would do mark it off right against the Salem Tigers. That's coming at the 15 yard line. That'll move the ball down to the seven. Eight yard penalty. That is the 10th penalty now for 93 yards for the Salem Tigers. And it has helped Houston move all the way from the 40 yard line. They've only gained 15 yards, but they've moved almost 38. So now first and goal. Hand off to Fuel. Fuel trying to get inside the five and down to the two. By number 24, Zach Fuel. That'll be a gain of six, maybe seven. Should put him closer to the one. Fulton with the stop. And now Houston goes in for a touchdown, but a flag goes down. Illegal shift by, by Red at right.
Illegal substitution called against Salem. And that's declined. So Houston with the touchdown now. Boy, this is a mess. These officials have made this game a mess. And I believe that was Hurst going in from a yard out. Now Houston down by seven. Mitchell comes in for the point after. 4.38 to go. Snap is back and the kick is up. And it looks good. It is good. Extra point was good by number 72, Trevor Mitchell. So Mitchell's point after is good. And it's 20 to 14 right now. But boy, you've got to worry about these penalties for the Salem Tigers. They gave Houston such good field position when they didn't really need any extra help. And the Tigers may have kept them from having to use more time off the clock. And that's the concern right now because the Tigers with the lead, 20 to 14. Would like to definitely shut this thing down with a good long drive here and finish it up. But you know, Houston's got some other ideas. We'll see what the Tigers ground game can do. Four and a half minutes, a long time. Houston burns some time getting their touchdown. A one yard run by Hurst. His second of the game with 438 remaining in this ball game. Salem will be at Thayer next Friday night. We're we'll there to bring it to you on KSMO, KSMORadio.com. Don't forget our next broadcast will be Lady Tigers softball against Waynesville Monday afternoon on KSMORadio.com only as Salem will be uh, playing at the Salem City Park. We'll have that game for you online only as the Cardinals will have a double hitter that day. So Mitchell to kick and tries the onside kick and the Tigers have to get to it. And they're really slow in reacting to that ball. I don't know who's got it. And it's Salem Tiger ball. Coming up with that ball for the Salem Tigers. Sam Chase. Tigers were a little bit uh, hesitant. That ball crossed the 50 and didn't really get aggressive with it. But Salem has good field position with 4.36 to go. They've got the lead, but they'd like to add to it. And the Houston Tigers would like to get that ball back. Tigers will go with three men in the backfield. Handoff goes to Camden up the middle. Camden with a big hole, gets almost 10. And a flag comes down late. Boy, too many flags in this game. Let the game go. These officials have been throwing flags virtually every play. The gain of 10. Face masking against Houston. It's a 10 yard gain by Camden. And then they'll add on just five more, and not a personal foul. And, and so it's first and 10 for Salem at the Houston 38 yard line. That's the 11th first down for Salem in this game. Got the clock starts running again. Tigers need to take some time off the play clock. They've been getting up to the line of scrimmage and moving very quickly right now. They like to burn a little bit of that clock off. Connell does so. Gives it to Atchison up the middle, and Atchison will get about three or four. Probably closer to three. I may say his knee was down closer to the 36, which would be a gain of two. Fumble recovered by 51, Sam Chase. That'll bring up 
Second down, eight yards to go. Again, getting up there with still plenty of time on the play clock. But you don't want Salem to get out of their rhythm, but they need to take a little more time in their huddle. Connell now goes under center. Second and eight. Gets that ball to Camden. Camden will dive forward for two. Bring up third down and still at least, least six. For Salem. Down to three minutes left to go. Tigers would still like to get another first down here. Third down, six yards to go. Now they go back in that eye formation. Receivers wide to the right, wide to the left. Coffin and Newman. Connell giving it to Camden. He is hauled down for a loss of three, almost four. As Carroll got back there with Wilder Mitchell, and it'll bring up fourth down. And with 2.35 to go in this fourth quarter, Houston will burn a timeout after the loss of three, make that four, by Camden. Yeah, Carroll and Mitchell blitzed, and they were in that backfield when Caden tried to get up the middle. There was just no room for him to go. Dent County Rental at 3601 Highway 72 in Salem can rent you a number of different things like tractors, metal working tools, lights, saws, sanders, and so much more. Check them out at DentCountyRental.com or on Facebook. Open Monday through Friday. 7.30 to 4, and Saturday, 7.30 to 11, Dent County Rental. So 2.35 left to go. Tigers, Connell will go back to punt. Franklin will drop deep. Tigers need to make sure that Houston has to go a long distance. Snap is high. Connell gets it. Almost blocked. Comes off the side of his foot. Bounces around the 20-yard line. And it'll be downed there by the Tiger player, Tayton Barton. And that's where Houston will have it at the 22-yard line with two and a half minutes to go in this, the fourth quarter. Salem with a 20-14 to 14 lead. Didn't take that much time off the clock. And now Houston has the chance here near the end. Fuel checks out. Going to bring in probably more receivers here. Houston with 14 first downs in this game. Salem with 11. Three men in the formation is Franklin. Goes back, hands it off to Carroll. Carroll hit right away, but breaks the tackle, still on his feet. Carroll stays on his feet and goes down at the 20. A loss of two. Houston, number 22, Anthony Carroll. Tried to Stop. set up like a passing Stop. formation. And Carroll goes down for a loss of two. Second down, 12, down to two minutes left to go. Back to throw. Firing it out of ball is caught and complete for a first, well, not quite a first down. Of a gain of 10 out to Hurst. He'll still bring up third and two. Third down, two yards to go, a minute and a half left. Handoff up the middle, big hole for Carroll. He's got the first down and more. And at the 40 yard line is where he'll come down, a gain of nine. So Carroll with a big run, another first down for Houston as they reset the chains. Houston not even waiting for them to reset the chains. Back to throw Franklin, rolling to his right, flips it out. 
And it is incomplete, I believe. No, it's caught. No, it is caught. And Anthony Carroll caught it for a gain of four. Maybe five. they're going to give him six on that. They'll bring up second and five. One ten to go. One ten. Ball at the Houston 46 yard line. Four receivers in the pattern. Franklin back, getting some pressure, gets away, now wants to throw, now wants to run. Trying to take off, he is tackled from behind. A good job by Easton May. He ran him down with under a minute to go. Houston has just one timeout left. They did not call it. Down to 45 seconds left. Is Franklin Hall down from behind? He's back to throw. Looking, looking, wants to fire deep. Nobody there yet. Now comes back into the field. He'll get the first down and more across. the 50 to the 47 yard line it'll be a gain of seven with 33 seconds left and another Houston first down and I believe they have burned their last timeout with the score Salem 20 Houston 14 we're going to take a 30 second break and come back this is Tiger football on KSMO radio and KSMO radio.com Thirty-three seconds left to go in the clock. Twenty fourteen Salem on top. First and ten Houston at the Salem Tiger forty-eight yard line. Houston with no more timeouts. They have done a hook and ladder in this game twice and burned Salem. Back to throw Franklin fires that ball out. It's incomplete through the hands of the intended receiver out there, and that was number seven, which is Robin Toon. took all of four seconds. 14 passes now. He's completed nine. Salem Tiger defense trying to hang on, trying to go to two and one, trying to give Houston their first loss. Houston brings in their pass package. McNew in there, they go trips left. And now flag goes down. I think Houston moved a little early, and they did. That moves the ball back to the 47 yard line of Houston. Franklin has Carroll with him. Hurst on a slot. Back to throw. Ball is complete on a screen, but a nice play by the Tigers to read it. As they try to go inside. And down to 15 seconds left. And now spiking the ball down is Franklin. So they did complete the pass inside to Renee Lathram for a gain of two. Just nine seconds on the clock. They'll have to go deep or they could do a hook and ladder here. Lathram comes wide to the left side. Hurst in the slot to the left. Franklin Bag to throw, fires it deep down the field, and the ball is knocked away. Knocked away with two seconds left. Two seconds still remain. 
Good defense by the Tigers back there. Still two seconds on the clock on the fourth down play. The Tigers of Salem will hang on and beat Houston on the fourth down. It's still about 10 or maybe 11. And all Salem needs to do is take a knee. So Salem with a couple of Caden Camden touchdowns in that third quarter. Rally back, hold on, and they can put this one to rest with a knee. And they do so. As Garrett Connell takes the knee, Tigers win it 20 to 14. We'll take a two minute break and come back. This is Tiger football on KSMO Media. Welcome back, Salem Tigers win it by a final score of 20 to 14. Interesting game because the Salem Tigers offense in the first half was virtually nil. Then penalties started racking up for Salem Tigers in which really uh, in this game, both teams had too many penalties, but the officials kind of called some things that a little bit, a little bit touch and go, I would have to say. I'm not, not trying to criticize officials. It's tough to call a game, but you know sometimes you get a little ticky tacky, and you just need to let let the game play and get a flow to it. And that just never really happened tonight. This game just seemed to sometimes drag on. When teams had their their games going, the the, 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 the clock was rolling and things were going good. But once they started throwing a few flags, it seemed they threw a lot of flags, and it just took the uh, momentum away, basically from either any either of the teams when they were trying to get going. But it was the Salem Tigers coming out on top 20 to 14 in this game. Tale of two halves, really. Houston Tigers dominated the first half, but committed some uh, two fumbles that cost them, and then could not score at the end of a quarter, at the end of the half as time ran out. They had burned all their their timeouts, and as they got near the end of the game, then they got down to the three yard line. They had no time left, and the Tigers dodged a bullet there. So 7-6 to six going into halftime. The Salem football Tigers came out with a whole different attitude. They threw the ball quite a bit in the first half, and didn't, they had some success, but not a ton of success. They came out and got the game going on the ground. Caden Camden really had a great second half for the Salem Tigers. He finished in the game, Caden did, with a total of 19 carries for 146 yards and two touchdowns. He had a total of 10 yards, 10 yards going in, for the halftime. That's a, that's a huge second half. Anyway, two touchdowns. The first on a 16-yard run at the 850 mark of the second, uh, third quarter. And then it was also Camden going in from 14 yards out with 129 left to go in the, in the third quarter. And then the two-point conversion. Big play as Gover caught the two-point pass from Connell. And uh, that was huge in the game. So the Tigers of Salem Win it by a score of that 20 to 14. Individually, Garrett Connell had two rush or three rushes for a total of 15 yards. Camden, as we mentioned, 19 for 146 and two touchdowns. Devin Atchison had a total of uh, kind of six carries for a total of 11. I make that 17 yards for the Tigers. Salem ended up with 181 yards rushing. Garrett Connell threw the ball nine times, had two interceptions, completed. Of those nine, five for 48 yards for a total of 229 yards to the Salem Tigers. Again, in that first half, they had only 53 yards total in that first half. For the Houston Tigers, their leading rusher was Hurst. Bailey Hurst had 82 yards at halftime and finished the game with 90. Zach Fuel finished the game with 51 yards. He did that on 13 carries. By the way, Hurst had 20 carries in the game. Ty Franklin. Finished the game with 18 yards. Uh, he had six carries in the contest. 44 yards for Anthony um, Carroll. He had uh, seven carries. And then the Toon boy, Robin Toon, had two carries for 30 yards. 233 yards rushing 
for Houston this game. And Ty Franklin threw the ball 17 times, completed 10 for 88 yards in the contest. Hurst had two touchdowns, an 11-yard run, and a one-yard run in that fourth quarter. And uh, that, was, that was it for Houston. That, that was their scoring. And for the Salem Tigers, Caden Camden with his two rushing touchdowns. But the big play in the first half was the Garrett Connell 72-yard fumble recovery and run back for a touchdown. On the fumble by Sishan, uh, he picked that ball out of the air, ran it back 72 yards, not counted as part of your offense, but that 72 yard, that was really the biggest play of Salem in the entire first half, and it uh, doesn't even show up on your stat board except as a touchdown, but Garrett will take it. Trust me, he will. But the Tigers had that fortunate bounce. Connell took it back, and that made it 6 to nothing. And then, of course, uh, Right away, Houston came back on their next possession, made it 7-6, to six, and then stayed that way through halftime. And then the Tigers really changed the complexion of this game in the second half. We'll finish things up with stats when we return in two minutes. This is Tiger Football on KSMO Media. And welcome back to Salem High School football field. Still a lot of meandering out and about on the field, but Tigers win it 20 to 7, uh, sorry, 20 to 14 to go to 2 and 1 on the season. Houston drops to 2 and 1 on the season. Tigers scoring, we already talked about in the first quarter, O'Connell 72-yard fumble recovery and and return at 2-14, 6 nothing Salem Tigers at that point. Hurst came right back, scored at the 11-21 mark of the second quarter on an 11-yard run after a real nice drive by Houston. Mitchell's point after made it 7-6, to six, stayed that way through halftime. In the second half, the Tigers came out, got the ball, and went on a 3-minute and 10-second drive that uh, captured about 72 yards. Caden Camden went in from 16 yards out. He had a great run through the entire rush. I think he ran... I think he gained all but four yards of that entire drive. Anyway, he had a 16-yard run as he got to the outside, cut right down the middle on a pitch back, then took the ball to the outside, and he scored, and that was a 16-yard run. Two-point conversion failed, and at that time it was 12-7. to Tigers on the very next possession, they held Houston, came back, and scored with 129 to go in the third quarter, another 14-yard run from Camden. This time a two-point conversion to Gover was good from Connell, and... The Tigers had a 20-7 lead, but Houston would not go away. Came back in that fourth quarter, had a real nice drive, but it was aided by a number of penalties by the Salem Tigers. And with 4.38 to go, Hurst went in from a yard out to make it 20-14 to after the Mitchell point after. But that's as close as it would get. Tigers of Salem had 11 first downs in this game. They had 10 penalties for 93 yards. 10 for 93 yards. Wow. And that's, a, that's tough. And for Houston, though, they had eight penalties for 80 yards. Houston had 16 first downs, two fumbles in the game. Salem Tigers had 11 first downs, two INTs in the game, two interceptions, as Toon and Franklin each had interceptions against Connell. So the Tigers of Salem will be on the road next week at Thayer to take on the Bobcats. That's a tough place to go. We'll be down there to bring the game to you here on KSMO and online at ksmoradio.com. We'll stream it on Twitch TV. We do hope that you will enjoy the game uh, here. We hope you enjoy this game, and we hope you'll enjoy the game from Thayer next week as the Tigers go in on a big win over Houston. They're 1-0 in the SCA, and again, the final score here was 20-14. to Thanks to Jim back at the station. Thanks to Krista and... Craig and everybody on the TV side down there tonight. And, of course, I want to thank you for joining us here at KSMO Radio. Ricky was out today, and he'll be out again next week. But we'll have him back the following week. But in the meantime, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast here on KSMO and online at ksmoradio.com. For those on the radio side, we got Cardinal Baseball coming up next. We'll join that game in progress with the Reds right here on 1340 AM. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Again, Salem wins at 20-14, and good night from the high school football field.